name is Brian Johnson. I've been an online entrepreneur now since about 2002, 2003, quite a while. I've got a lot of questions from people that are asking me what type of hosting account do I use and what do they recommend? Well, it's a, it's a kind of a loaded question. It really depends on where you are and what your needs are. So let's go over some of the basics here. Um, first off, you'll find that on the low end of the spectrum there's what is called shared hosting. And what that simply means is that a web uh, hosting provider will allow you a small percentage of a server that is shared between uh, different user accounts. So your website might be on a server with hundreds or even thousands of other websites. That's not necessarily a bad thing. and A lot of people uh, feel like that might uh, jeopardize your, your website rankings or you just don't have as much control. I'm not really so concerned about website rankings. After all, if, if that were really the case, then Google could potentially uh, take down the rankings of thousands and thousands of websites just because there are so many websites that are on shared hosting accounts. Now, the flip side of that, while it, the, a shared hosting account might not really affect your ranking, it is going to affect your ability to have more control over the server. You're only going to be able to host so many domains on shared hosting. You're only going to get a small uh, disk space on the server. And they're only going to allot you so much bandwidth. If you're just getting started, if you don't have any domains or you have maybe one or two, if you don't have, uh, if you're just getting started, like I said, then shared hosting might be a good place for you to start. Uh, the second hosting that we can talk about is a semi-dedicated server and dedicated servers. Now, those are kind of the opposite ends of the spectrum from shared hosting. With a dedicated server, you're actually renting per month uh, the use of a computer server. It's kind of like a small computer, only it's instead of running an operating system, it's running a special uh, system, operating system, just to basically house uh, websites. So it gives you a, a tremendous amount of power and flexibility. You're able to run a lot of website scripts and applications that you probably couldn't run on a shared host, host hosting account, pardon me. At the same time, of course, with all this power, you're going, to be end up, you're going to end up spending quite a lot more money. So is it really worth it for you to get either a semi-dedicated or a dedicated server? These typically range in price from about $49 all the way up to hundreds of dollars, maybe even thousands of dollars for large corporations that have a, a tremendous amount of web traffic. Amazon.com, they are on a, a dedicated server. It's probably a huge server and the server bills are probably quite a bit. Of course, they have thousands of th and thousands of visitors on their site and, and it's an e-commerce site. What I like to do is I like to look for what's called reseller hosting and simply put, that is kind of like a happy medium between shared hosting and a semi-dedicated or a dedicated server environment. You're given a percentage of a server and basically you share that space with other people that have a similar type of an account, so it would be a reseller account, and you can usually host as many websites as you want. Now I really like that. I, I like the ability of having so much space on a server and being able to host as many domains as I want. Of course, the other uh, limiting factor is the bandwidth. You're going to be limited to a certain amount of bandwidth, so that has to be taken into consideration. And when you're searching for web hosting companies, go ahead and search for uh, the amount of bandwidth that they allow, allow and the amount of disk space that each hosting packages, package offers. Um, one of the things I really like about using a reseller account is I've got access to what's called the skeleton directory. Now, it's not Halloween, it's not a horror movie. Really, simply put, a skeleton directory allows you to upload certain files to the, uh, the, root of, the root part of your server. Now, each time you add a new uh, domain to your hosting account, all the files in the skeleton directory are going to be copied over to the new uh, domain host that you have, or the new domain website that you're setting up within your your hosting environment. And it doesn't sound like it's a really big deal, but really when you get serious about internet marketing, 
It's all about how can I save time, how can I get more done, and how can I focus on what's most important. So the things that are really important that I try to focus on, content, unique, quality content that brings people back. Things like videos that I'm shooting right now. Uh, inbound links. These are the kind of things I want to focus my time on. If I'm going to launch, let's say, 10 websites in January and February, I sure don't want to spend two or three hours basically uploading files, get everything, getting everything set. And what I've been able to do is simply upload a lot of files. I call them install, website install files. And I get everything ready on one, on one basically application within my hosting account. And then every time I add a domain, all those files are copied over. It really becomes neat when you've got a couple of them. I actually have one reseller hosting account that I use for WordPress sites. And I've got another reseller hosting account I use for uh, Build a Niche Store or BANS. Uh, build a Niche Store is actually a website script that, that allows you to build websites and it pulls in eBay results based on RSS feeds. It's very sophisticated, it works quite well, and I've got a lot of sales. So by having two servers, I can basically uh, launch a new website within minutes. I can have all the files ready to go for building a niche store. I can log into my admin panel right now and uh, add a couple configurations and my site is up and, up and running. The same is true for WordPress. When I launch a new WordPress site, I don't worry about trying to find all, finding all those plugins that I like. I don't have to worry about uh, finding the different uh, website themes that I use through WordPress. And all the custom configurations I can do on one WordPress install, I simply get all that information in the skeleton directory, and that allows me to uh, get my sites up quickly and easily. And it saves me time, you know, those 10, 20 minutes of uploading files and making sure everything is set, it's all done. So that's really a, uh, one of the benefits of being able to have a reseller hosting account. Some of the, uh, there's some actual, actually there's some hosting accounts that are between reseller and shared server and the thing you need to be aware of is you probably don't have access to the skeleton directory so if you're going to spend 10 12 bucks you might want to think about bumping up to a reseller hosting account which is going to give you access to that uh, skeleton directory i actually got a, a comment here on youtube from someone that watched my one of my videos and they said uh, what are you typically using for a web host and do you think that hosting providers that provide uh, WordPress auto installs are beneficial and my answer is really probably not because I can make my own auto install file by using that skeleton, skeleton directory I mentioned. I get all the files I need and then all I have to do is edit one file and upload that to each site and I'm set to go and I don't, ha I don't have to forget about oh I forgot to get this plugin or I forgot this theme or I forgot to add that AdSense script that uh, takes out those public uh, ads and whatnot. So these are some ideas for hosting for you and you can find additional information if you're on YouTube or any of the video sites just by clicking the link or the domain address in this video. You'll have a complete list of hosting companies that I use and, and recommend. Take care.